have a look now at the Cartesian Capital Local Equity Fund with Anthea Gardner of Cartesian Capital. You like Capitec, you like, um, what else do you like? There's a couple of other things here. Let me just look in the list here, Anthea. Sorry, I'm disorganized. Grand Parade, things like that. There are pockets of investment opportunities on a very elevated market, apparently. Yeah, ex well, thanks for having me, first of all. Um, yes, I guess the last time I spoke to you, we were talking about how we were expecting a market correction. Um, that was about two weeks ago, and we've certainly seen the market come off significantly since then, enough to make us nervous. Mm -hmm. But I think what we've got now is probably good opportunities. Y you know, so th there's a lot of talk about how South Africa's struggling. Um, yesterday, our GDP got revised down by the IMF to 1.4%. So one of my kind of favorite uh, Rand Hedge stocks is Steinoff, really. Um, it, it, it's such a good play on an offshore market. Um, they're now 90% of their revenue is from the UK and Europe. Good cash generator, the second largest retailer after IKEA, furniture retailer after IKEA, um, and, and doing well. They're a good cash generating business. Um, their dividend was increased by 88% recently in the mm. last um, in the last results presentation. So there's a lot of good news, and clearly Marcus Hurst is quite positive on Europe. I mean, his returns were up uh, on the operating profit level were up. 52% when all of us are worried about Europe. So quite frankly, I think he's doing okay. It's interesting you mentioned the international exposure because another company you like is Capitec, which if I'm not mistaken is all South African, but, uh, and has oh. gone through, through its issues as well with Ex regard to uh, yeah. unsecured oh, lending. You, you, you've definitely got me there. <laughs> um, but I do like Capitec. You know when, when African Bank failed, the Capitec was down 13%, I, I think it was 13%, but it's now up 18% mm. since kind of from its trough. So it has recovered, and I, I've always liked the story, and I was really nervous with the African bank failure because we were all around when Lehman happened, and the conta uh, contagion was huge. There, there was big issues, banks getting worried, liquidity issues. But Capitec's a different model. You know, um, they're more of a fee-based model. Um, and th the other thing about Capitec, and, and besides the fact that they just keep beating every time they beat consensus, so you're looking at a share that keeps going up, um, the other thing about Capitec is that they're quite cautious and as I said a lot of their money comes from fee transactions and not the unsecured lending which was the African bank issue. Um, one of the things that Capitec did kind of at their last results was they mentioned that they'd increased kind of their cover ratio for non-performing loans from 170 percent to 200 percent. So they're being conservative. Th there's no worry that their impairments are going to increase and if they do well we're watching we're watching carefully you know um, of course the other thing about Capitec is that they're looking to um, release a credit card um, in September next year and what we've seen from Capitec they're cu they're, they currently have two and a half million clients and they're growing that by up to a hundred thousand clients a month and the interesting thing is that they're taking market share from the bigger guys, mm. so from the big four, you know, the first rands and abses. Um, and so what's happening, I think, is that clients and, and consumers like myself who are looking at Capitec and going, well, I want cheaper banking. I, I want to, I'm, I'm cutting costs at every corner. Capitec offers that. They, they offer cheaper banking. So they're not, they're not taking African banks, mm. unsecure lending clients, they really are eating into the big four's lunch. Exactly. Yeah. Mark, from your perspective, are you happy with the companies that have been chosen or picking the brains on, on the... Yeah, We've we got a few others here, I think, that we haven't addressed. It's interesting, I've been around long enough to remember when exactly what you were saying about Capitec was being said about Abel as well, and uh, Keiku Lake Ah. Um, but what I find quite, quite interesting is uh, the, the word Rond Hedge, and particularly with respect to Stein off. Um, that presupposes that it's a one-way bet, that you know, the rent's weak. Uh, what happens in a scenario where the rent goes from 14 to the euro to 10 or 11? It's not out of the question. We've been there before. No, it certainly isn't out of the question, but I think in the short to medium term, it's, it is almost a one-way bet. You know, we're, we're, we've, we've got twin deficits, we've current account deficits, we've got savings deficits, we've got mining strikes. We've got low GDP. We've got a lot of things against us. And so does Europe, fair enough. 
And then at the same time, we're sitting, the, the, the Saab is sitting in, in, in such a contentious position because it's stuck between raising interest rates to keep inflation down, which is its mandate, and not raising inflation, um, interest rates because it, it'll subdue the growth of the country, mm. which we clearly need. So I'm afraid in the short term, I, I think the RAND probably is not going to strengthen too much. Um, it is my job, though, to watch that share and to watch what happens. And so if I think things change, then believe me, I, I'll change my mind <laughs> very quickly. And th in three minutes' time, the U.S. Federal Reserve's minutes will, from their last meeting will be released. What do you think about that? Do you think the market is in the mood to say, even if it's good, we're going to sell it, even if it's bad, we're going to sell it, because there's been a certain shift in psychology? There has indeed been a, a shift in psychology, Lindsay. I, I, I think for the risk premium that you're paying in the equity market, in developed markets, I don't think you're getting enough out of it. So I've recently been in a conference where some of the top chief economists of the world have been saying that in equities, you're looking for a 2% equity premium over fixed income markets. And is that enough to justify buying equities? Uh, I, I don't know. That's a call, I guess, that we'll, we'll see happen. It, it, it all feels a bit nervous. Um, and then, of course, with the Fed having talking about raising interest rates, I, I don't think that the U.S. Fed would raise interest rates without taking cognizance of what's happening in Europe. So I suspect we're, we're gonna, they're going to delay this as long as they possibly can. At some stage, they're going to have to normalize. Mm. But for now, maybe not. And maybe that has a benefit for emerging markets like SA. Maybe. Exactly. Hopefully. Yes, indeed. Anthea, thank you so much for joining us today.